I'm going to use ProtoPie to build a date range picker. ProtoPie is a UX tool that lets you create more interactive prototypes than Figma. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to set up interactions, create components, and use variables. So let's get started. Of course, you'll need to have ProtoPie installed on your device, so if you don't have it already, go to protopie.io and select your download. Then you're going to want to start a new project. I mocked up my design in Figma, but ProtoPie also integrates with Adobe XD and Sketch. For those of you following along on Figma, you'll need to make sure you're running the ProtoPie plugin. It will bring up this pop-up and you can select the frames that you want to export and then hit export. One of the great things about ProtoPie is that if you need to make a change in Figma, whenever you re-export it to ProtoPie, ProtoPie will recognize that it's already imported that scene and will import the styling changes while keeping all the work you already did in ProtoPie. For my first interaction, I want to make this date section expand and collapse. Every interaction in ProtoPie needs three things, an object, a trigger, and a response. For this interaction, the date header section will be my object. I can add a trigger by clicking add trigger and select from this list of triggers. Under the trigger, I can add as many responses as I want by hitting the plus button. I want my response to scale the date selector section to a height of zero. I also need to make sure that the date selector section has clip sublayers selected. If I run the prototype, the section will collapse, but now I need to make it expand. I'll add a condition. If date selector height equals zero, and under that, I'll add another scale response. But this time, I'll set it to the full height. Let's add a rotation to the chevrons. I want to make my chevrons spin clockwise to expand and counterclockwise to collapse. This means I'm going to need to add another condition for my collapse interactions. If chevron rotation is equal to zero, and under that, I'll add in my collapse interactions. You might notice that the chevron is rotating by the top left corner, and that's because the origin is set to the top left, so you're going to want to go into the chevron settings and set the origin to center. And there you have it. We've programmed our first interaction in ProtoPie. Components in ProtoPie are similar to in Figma. You can create your main component, and if you use that component throughout your design, and later on you realize you need to make a change or add an interaction, you only need to add it to your main component, and those changes will be applied throughout your design. So this is a tool that will save you lots of time and frustration. In this example, we're going to use components for each of the calendar days. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a component for my first calendar day and I'm going to add in the start date selection interaction. In other words, I'm going to on click change the color to this dark blue with a white for the text. And I'm also going to add in a corner radius of eight to the top and bottom left corners and a zero radius on the right corners. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that the text objects aren't editable when you initially import them. If I go back to my main screen and run the prototype, immediately only my first day will work because I haven't copied the components to the rest of my calendar days. So I'll go ahead and do that now. There's not really a great way to do this. I just copy and paste my first component on top of all of the other calendar days, and then I delete the old ones, and then I change all of the days to match the given calendar day. If you know of a better way to do this, feel free to let me know. Anyhow, once we've done all of that, all of the days should work in the prototype, and in the future, if we want to add any design changes or apply any new interactions, we only need to do that on the main calendar day component. Variables allow us to store data and communicate between our components. We're gonna set up two variables on our main scene and four in our component. In the main scene, I'm gonna name my variables start date and end date. And as their names imply, they will store the start and end date values of my selections. 
In the component, I will have a start and end date variable as well, and they're gonna have the same information as the ones on my main scene. And then I'm also going to have a variable called first input complete and a variable called second input complete. And these variables will be Boolean values, meaning that they're either going to be true or false, one or zero. And by default, they're set to zero, meaning false. And we're gonna use them to determine if we've input our date values or not. Now we wanna add in messaging to communicate between our main scene and our component. In my on-click action for my calendar date, I will add in a send response. And you need to make sure to add in a message which you can type in whatever you want. I'm gonna just name it start date. You're gonna need to make sure to send the message with a value. Since I want this to send the date of the selected calendar day, which in my case is stored in the text layer of the component, I'm going to type a backtick, the name of the layer I want to send, and another backtick followed by dot text. Going back to my main scene, I will add a receive trigger, and in that trigger I want to type the exact same message I just typed in my send response, and I want to assign this value to the variable start date. Let's test this out and see what's going on behind the scenes. Under our receive trigger, I'll add a text response, and I want to affect the start date input. The content should be a formula, which I'll type in as 2023-01- plus our variable start date. I also want to update the color of the text to be active and not the placeholder color. And when I run the prototype, the value of the start date input will update based on the date I select. In the previous step, we updated the start input field. For this step, I actually split the year and month and separated those from the day since I wanted to make the date an input value. Inputs are a way to allow users to type in their own custom values, and you can set up input types such as number, text, password, or URL, and there are lots of other cool settings you can apply to your input fields. Unfortunately, in this video, we won't be going too deep into the topic of inputs, but I do have it set up in my prototype, which I will be publishing. So feel free to check out what I did and how I set up the inputs on your own time. For this part of the tutorial, I already put together all of my interactions and I'll just walk through what each of them does and why I did it in that way. We'll start in the component with our tap interaction. You can see that we have four conditions here and I'll just rename them to break it down a little. The first one is first date click and this condition is if first input complete equals zero and if second input complete equals zero, which essentially means nothing has been selected. The second condition is first date off click. We set this up uh, in a previous step and if you remember the condition is if left corner radius is equal to eight, meaning if that first date has been selected. The third condition is second date click, and this condition is if first input complete equals one, so the first date has been selected, and if second input complete equals zero, meaning the second date has not been selected. And the fourth condition we have is second date off click. And this is similar to the first one, except for it says if the right corner radius is equal to eight. So you see that the first day click and the second day click will cause the day selected to change to the styling we have for an active day, meaning it's gonna be dark blue with white text. And for the start date, it will have corner radius of eight on the right corner and then the opposite for the end date. The off-click interactions serve to reset the days and um, send them back to that default styling. We also have send responses for the on-click interactions. They're going to send the date value. So that's the backtick date, backtick.text, and it's just sending the value that's stored in that text layer. And then for the off-click interactions, they're sending back a value of zero, which is going to reset the date. Back in our main scene, we have a start date receive trigger and an end date receive trigger. And these by default were named received, but I of course changed the names to make it easier to decipher. 
both of these are going to do pretty much the same thing. However, the values received will go to their respective variables and the start date will be affecting the start date input field, whereas the end date will be affecting the end date input field, of course. These top responses are changing the input field to be the active color in styling. We are also using the formula to update the date to match the selected date with a leading zero. The condition below these says that if the start date or end date, depending on what you're looking at, is greater than or equal to 10, and the formula for the input changes to having no leading zero. So this will account for if the date selected is a single digit or a double digit. Below that is the condition that says if the value received is zero, then it resets everything. As I mentioned before, the interactions for the start and end date receive triggers will almost be identical, except for in the start date, if it is reset, we also want to make sure the end date resets as well in case it has already been selected. Going back to the component, I have two receive triggers, first input complete and second input complete. And under the first input complete trigger, we have a condition for if the value is zero and the interactions are to reset the calendar day. They will also send back a message end date with the value of zero. Under the second input complete trigger, the condition will be if the second input complete is equal to zero and the interactions are the exact same as the first input complete trigger, even the send message. We also have an additional condition here that says if the rectangle one's opacity is equal to zero and under that we are setting the rectangle's opacity to zero. In a moment, we're going to set the in-between dates to have a light blue background color and this condition exists so that if the user decides to deselect the end date, the in-between dates will also be deselected or reset to their default state. So that way you don't have random light blue boxes with no start or end date. Now let's talk about the other two received triggers you might have noticed and I've named them start date and end date. These are receiving the start date and end date messages and assigning the values to their respective variables. In the start date receive trigger, the condition and all the interactions below only matter if you're allowing the user to input the value on the keyboard. And as I said before, we aren't going into that in this tutorial, so I won't talk about those. The interactions and conditions under the end date, however, are a little more important. The first condition says that if the calendar day text value is greater than the start date and less than the end date, and below that is the response to turn the rectangle one's opacity to 100. So that's changing those in-between dates to being that light blue highlighted color. This last condition is just like with the start date for if you are allowing the text input. And like I said, we're not gonna be covering that in this tutorial, but feel free to check it out. If you go back to the main component, you can see that there's a few more and those deal with the input values. You can look over it in your own time, but I hope this video helped you to learn how to set up a calendar interactive prototype using ProtoPie.